this video, we'll do something as mundane as integrating a computer mouse with Skyhoy products. We have a PTC view on the table. If you don't know what a PTC view is, it's one of our PTC controllers that has color screens. It looks like this really beautiful product, very useful for like volunteers in a church that needs a colorful thumbnail to recall a preset or just have a few cameras to select between. Today, it's the product that I had and any product that you find in our image gallery here that has this kind of form factor, has a USB-A plug on the backside and you can plug in the computer mouse straight into that product. So that's uh, really uh, good to know. It doesn't really matter that it's the PC view, but the UI of it looks like this. And I have already added an ATEM switcher. And in fact, the PTC view is not going to play any other role than being the host for connecting the computer mouse, because this one will then be managed as a internet connected, sorry, network connected device, because the application we'll be looking at is the one called XPanel Hits. So let's just go to the packages folder of the um, UI of the PTC view. In the packages folder, you can search up apps from our app store. And if we type in XPanel, then you'll see all the different applications we have that allow you to convert other devices into raw panel devices that can be integrated in Reactor. One of them would be, there we go, XPanel Hits. Okay, so if I click this one, I can now start it up. I can also set it up for auto start. So I'll just start it. And as I'm starting it, it will now create a raw panel server on this particular port. It will allow up to like 10 devices being added, so I can add 10 mice. And uh, by the way, there is a license as well. Uh, it's not very costly, but you can read about that on our wiki page, which I'll come back to in a moment. And then if you look at the log, you can see it's scanning for stuff. I have not connected the computer mouse just yet, but when I do, you can see that it will be noti noti notified, noticed, uh, yes. So now the mouse is added to the system. It is found on this port, but we don't need to know all those details. It's just useful to know that actually we have it activated because if I go back to the home screen, add a panel, then you'll see it's searching for panels on the network. If we just filter by mouse, you see this is it. It pops up on our IP address on the port that we saw in the logs. We are adding it straight away right here. It even has this sweet little icon. And then I can light it up, it says, which is not going to work because there is absolutely no feedback light on this mouse. I will create a custom configuration because what we want to do is to set it up so X, Y position changes will move around the Kia and it will also uh, with the left button uh, enable and disable the Kia. So um, let me get back to what that means. So for quick while we'll just go to the ATEM software control because this is my go-to demonstration device. It's very useful for a ton of things. And you see this orange output on the screen. That is the Kia, which is a graphic I've made in the media pool. It is a little pointer and it is now overlaid using a Luma Kia that uses the fill source and key source from media player number one. I found that the flying key is actually uh, the clever thing I can use to um, to change the position of this one and also the scale, but I just set the scale to one. That seemed to be uh, most, most useful for me in this case. Okay, so far so good. What I wanna do is to say anytime I'm changing like the X, uh, sorry, when I move the mouse, I want X and Y values to change. And when I press the left button, I want it to be like a toggle. So when I press the left button down, it it basically shows the cursor and then it's it's off again. So you can see the cursor is on off here. Let's move over here and then go to the configuration because we are all set to do this. Okay, let me just uh, get the mouse in the uh, view here. So um, this is the configuration view and uh, there are basically uh, two configurations. It could either be P2C view or it could be the mouse and we are gonna move uh, work on the mouse. So they are two different configurations in this case. Uh, we have something called a background and um, that is like you can create multiple pages. In, the, in this case, we just need the background. It's gonna be super simple. So to get started, let's click the left. And then in the inspector, you see a number of things that we can do with it. It's gonna be really easy. I'll just go to upstream Kia, upstream Kia enable. And then I um, basically need to select which ME row is it for, which upstream Kia is it for on an ATEM mini. That's easy because there's only one. And then I can use hold. Okay. Uh, if I use toggle, let's just do that for a moment. Now let's try to push the button here. Every time I do so, I'm toggling on and off the key. But if I press hold, I get exactly what I was after, which is press release, press release, press release. Not a press release, but press the button, release the button. <laughs> 
let's see if we can associate the movements of the mouse with changing of the position of the key. So that is these two. They appear in the system as what is called encoders. It means that as we are moving left and right, up and down with the mouse, they will generate positive and negative pulses, which can be used to change values, such as, if we go back to the ASM software control, the position of X and Y. Okay, so the, the cursor is right now here. And if I go in here and I click these two, I can configure those. Let's just do mouse Y at first, because that's the uh, inner ring. So we search up position and we find position Y for flying key. That sounds like the right thing. It is done here. Let's go over to the ATEM Mini and then let's see what happens if I move the mouse up and down on my hand. I can see a change to the Y value. That's pretty good. Okay, now what I will do is to then hold down this key so that I turn it on and then can we move it yes we can there's something with the scale and it will work better on the table so now i'm doing it on the table and you can see i'm moving the mouse but there's something about the scale of how much movement we see we'll come back to that in a moment why that is but let's also do the same for x so if i press the outer ring now this one i also need to assign the x movement to that because these are separated axes okay so position x is now being sought up and there uh, we have it okay so what about the x now i hold down the key and I move it left and I move it right. Okay, so I got, essentially, we, we are done in, in the sense that we have it working fundamentally as we want. Press down the, the key, uh, the, the left button, move it left, move it right, move it up. I can basically move this around on the screen with my mouse. Okay, so what is up with the scale? Now, if you go to the wiki page and you search up hits, and I want you to notice that the wiki page is a great resource for a lot of things. One of them would be hit devices on raw panel, because that is exactly the application X panel hits that we are talking about today, the one that enables the mouse to be interfaced. You see there are other devices that can be interfaced, like foot switches and uh, clicker remotes, and also the generic mouse. So um, I have recently added a section at the back, that talks about what is called deep configuration. Now, with these input devices, if you were to change like the iris of something with a scroll wheel or with the XY positioning, which is mm, interesting case, then uh, you don't want it to like change 20 at a time. This is why by default, we are dividing the input values from the mouse by 20. And then we are also reducing the frequency to like 10 Hertz. The scale that we are using can be modified. So that line, shows how to change it from the default 20 to five as an example. And that's actually pretty well adjusted with the case that we want to show. So what I need to do is to go back to packages, find X panel hits, and then in the deep config field, I paste in this little line of JSON code and it will even show itself in the log. So if I just clear this out, if I press save and restart, you see it is now saying, hey, I picked up a custom XY scale of five, but it's still, yes, connecting the same mouse and so on. Now let's go back to the ATEM mini software control here and then see what happens if I'm moving the mouse around just a little bit. Obviously the values are changing much more than before. And if I press down the left button and I move the mouse, then my movements, they're pretty moderate at the moment, but I can actually, I can move all the way from across the screen. Actually, to be honest, it feels like I should go even further down. So let's just go all the way down to one. So basically, unmodified we are dividing by one that's the same as not dividing by anything so we are now in a situation where i should see within like just flicking my wrist like this i'm able to go from side to side of the screen okay the movements are not going to be beautiful you can see the 10 hertz frequency of this and maybe one day i'll also change the frequency so you can set that in json but it does work as we intended to okay that was one idea another one was to actually apply this to a um to uh, to scaling a DVE. What is a DVE? That is like a digital video effects processing thingy here. And I want to change that over to um, this, this image. So basically now, if we in our ATEM switcher, turn this on, we have a, an image uh, on the screen here. Uh, actually, I think I can still like move this with my mouse. I'm now doing that. I'm you know moving that image around because we are essentially still changing the coordinates, the position of these. Uh, the flying X coordinates also is the same used for the DVE. So that, that is the same thing. But I want the mouse to, to work differently. So what I imagine is that the mouse would basically, as I press down the left key, I would enable us 
to um, to uh, to make that uh, change in position and size as well. Let's go back to configuration and um, I kind of want to clear out this one. So I'll just do all this, delete behaviors. We're now, you know, gone with that. And then I want to create a new page. Yes. Or will I? Well, there are two ways we could do this. We could either have like a new page that we want to go to. I have done that in a ton of videos and more to come. So maybe what we'll do is shift levels instead. Okay. So basically my idea was when I click that left button, I will basically go into a shifted state and I'm currently on normal and background. That's all good. So I'll just shift hold down. Now let's just see what happens if I press this one. No, notice what happens down here. Oh, okay. Like that. Press release. Press release, press release. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm basically going to the shift state when I press and hold the left key. So I want to use that as an enabling function. So if I go to the shifted state, and this is where I put my actions, then only when I hold down the left key, will I be able to move and scale my DV. Let's first do the X positioning. Okay, so uh, ha, what would this be? Size, maybe size. Um, no, 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 position. Yes, uh, it's going to be position, position X. And then we do the Y and we type in position Y. Okay. And then for the scroll wheel, I want to do size. Okay. So I do just size, which is like a generic size. I'm, I'm, you know, quite thrilled to see what's going to happen now. Wait. Um, so we just assume that the key is always on now. And as I'm, um, let's just go back here and we are in the shifted state right now. So if I use my mouse and move my mouse, we should see the key is moving around on the screen and it does. So it is still having all the same scaling and uh, 10 Hertz frequency. Now, the cool thing is, or the interesting thing is to see what happens if I use the scroll wheel. And yes, in fact, I am scrolling the DV size. Um, this is not for on air, obviously, because you see that the X and the Y dimension is changing with a little bit of lag between them because they are changed as separate parameters. So this is why it's like wavy a little bit, but it does work as intended. Now, if we go out to the normal state, or if we just press the left button, then you see that we are basically shifting in and out of uh, between normal state and shifted. And in the normal state where we are right now, nothing is going to happen. I can do whatever I want. So it's only when I press down, the left button and use the scroll wheel that I'm changing the size. Now, that is exactly what I intended to do. So what I will do now on the table here is press, move the mouse, use the scroll wheel, and I can position my DVE right there where I want it, release the mouse, and now we are safe because nothing will happen when I'm back in the normal state. So this also showed you how Reactor is built with shift levels and pages as well. So you have those two dimensional things like we had in Unisketch, but this is clearly an extension to what you know from Stream Decks that you have this additional broadcast related dimension, namely the shift state, which so many of you are used to having on vision mixing systems, etc. And very useful in this context because we could just utilize this as an enabling function very easily at hand inside of the configuration engine.